If you're a dad whose OCD is keeping you awake at night, this one's for you. Like me or someone that struggles with the mental health. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass. But you are not alone. As you'll see from this podcast. Last night I had a terrible night's sleep. It must have been three o'clock where I actually finally drifted off to sleep. It was 2.48. And that may well be because it's June in the UK and we don't have air conditioning. It may well be because I could hear the dog scratching around outside my door. Don't get me involved. It could have been that I was nervous for my kids who had their sports day today. It could be because at the moment, probably like for most people, there seems to be too much month at the end of the money. Or it could be that I've got OCD and I'm ruminating about some disturbing intrusive thought. Poor sleep is something that's quite common for me. And I might just not be able to sleep because I'm anxious for reasons that lots of dads are anxious about money or about family or about relationships. But I certainly feel if you've got OCD, that doesn't help. That's like an extra layer. That's an extra load of things whizzing around in your mind to worry and think about. One tip that has probably helped me more than ever is your mindset. Instead of panicking and worrying about, oh, I'm so tired, oh, I'm not going to get any sleep, oh, I'm going to be exhausted tomorrow. Instead of it being a nightmare, try and think of it as an adventure. Try and view this a bit more objectively. Oh, it's half two in the morning and I can't sleep. What could I do? When you can't sleep because you're ruminating about intrusive thought, the worst thing to do is to ruminate about the fact that you can't sleep because you can't sleep because of intrusive thoughts, if you see what I mean. And suddenly that changes the perspective. When you think of things as an adventure, your life's an adventure as opposed to some stressful thing you're going through, that can really help. And that leads on to gratitude. I know gratitude is a buzzword that's thrown around and people get annoyed. Gratitude isn't the be all and end all. The thing is, it kind of is. If you're feeling sad or anxious or worried, Try and list 10 things you feel grateful for. In my case, the first five are my family. My wife, my lovely three children, our dopey but loving dog. How many times did you have to retake your mouse GCSE? And then also for the fact that I've got a loving and supportive family and loving and supportive friends. And we have a roof over our head. And although it doesn't pay me as much as I like and although money is a worry, I have a job. My wife has a job. My children go to school. We have enough just about food in the fridge. We can afford to pay our energy bills. Don't know if that's 10. It was 13. Touch wood, we've all got pretty good health. The fact that I've managed to reel off those lists means that I'm lucky enough to be someone who lives in the top percent of the population of the planet. The majority of people living on the planet do not have all those things are reeled off. And that should give me gratitude. The next tip I would say if you're a dad with OCD, which is causing you not to sleep, is get up and do something. Get up and have a cup of tea. Get up and make a list of what you're going to do the next day. Do you know what? Sometimes scrolling on my phone makes me feel a bit tired, makes me feel a bit desensitised to my rumination and my intrusive thoughts. If that works for you, do it. I've often found getting up, having a cup of tea, doing a little bit of the work I'm going to do tomorrow, it just helps to take the pressure off. It helps to stop me worrying quite so much. My next tip is think, well, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is you're really tired tomorrow, that you may need to find a 20 or 30 minute cat nap. Another thing I'm grateful for is that I work from home. 14. I don't have to pretend I'm not apps exhausted in an office while some micromanaging boss is giving me a hard time. I'm at home. I can walk round in my pants if I want to. Yeah, please don't. Might scare the dog and the postman of the neighbours, but you see my point. That's all I want to see. Thank you very much. The thing I've learned about OCD, and this example can probably be used for most things, don't give OCD the fuel. If I'm lying in bed, not being able to sleep because I'm ruminating about intrusive thoughts, don't then worry about not being able to sleep because you're worrying about <laughs> intrusive thoughts. Play the game. Acknowledge them. And just think, actually... Maybe your intrusive thoughts are trying to keep you safe. Maybe your intrusive thoughts are just a very overzealous PA that you have in your mind. If you can view your OCD less as a monster, maybe more just a busy but well-meaning voice in your mind that's trying to stop you from feeling any pressure or unhappiness or pain in your life. Again, it's about perception. And also, if you're a dad who can't sleep because you're worrying about intrusive thoughts... Remember, you're not alone. 
The fact that I'm doing this, that I feel inspired to post this in a very hot and sweaty car before I go to attend my kids' sports day proves this. I'm tired, but I'm also inspired to try and help other dads. If you can't sleep in the middle of the night, maybe your mind's saying, right, this is time you start writing that book, right? This is when you start writing that blog, right? This is when you start trying to investigate ways to make your life better. Take control of it. Don't let it control you. And also, in regards to my specific example, another thing to be grateful for. That's 15. The days of walking to school hand in hand with your kids, attending their sports days are numbered. Instead of lying in bed feeling pissed off or worried that you can't sleep, just accept that it is what it is. It's a minor bump in the road in a life of adventure, which if you work hard and stay positive, is going to bring you all the things you hope for. Another tip if you're a dad who can't sleep is have a list. I always have a list going, a things to do list, a list of work. Maybe even make it specific. Maybe make a joke out of it. Dad's insomniac list of things to do. Make a list of all the creative stuff you want to do and tick it off in the middle of the night when it's one in the morning and you can't sleep. Get up and do something. Getting up, doing a job of something maybe that you need to do or something that you're going, oh, I'd love to start writing that book or I'd, or I'd love to start that YouTube channel or I'd love to start that podcast or I'd love to start that blog, but I've not got the time. Well, you've got the time now, haven't you? It's one in the morning. No one wants anything from you. No one's looking for a charger. No one's hungry. No one needs to be taken out for a walk. Now is the time. If life gives you lemons, make lemonade. If life gives you insomnia, use the insomnia. No, it doesn't work. Just think how awesome it's going to make your TED Talk. If in five years' time, you're talking about how you made your YouTube or your podcast ebook so successful, that's just going to make the story, the adventure of your life, even more dramatic. That you used your insomnia to best use. You got up at one in the morning and wrote for an hour. And getting things done, ticking that job off, gave you enough dopamine to make you feel good that then probably relaxed you, that helped you get to sleep. If you have something you want to do or you're trying to do something, I'd love to know. Please let me know in the comments. And if you're starting a podcast or starting a YouTube channel or writing a book and want some one-to-one -one support, you can book a complimentary 50-minute session with me. The link's in the description. Another tip of things you can do is breath work. If, like me, intrusive thoughts are keeping you awake, think about your breath work. A very good way to relax your nervous system is to think about your breathing. If you breathe in for four, hold for a count of seven, and breathe out for eight, I'm pretty sure that you will suddenly start to feel a lot calmer. And doing this breath work exercise of breathing in for four, holding for seven, breathing out for eight, might calm you down enough to relax you enough to drift off to sleep. So just to recap on the six things that I've done to help me get to sleep. Number one, try and change your mindset. This is much easier said than done, but if you can try not to catastrophize, is that a word, catastrophize? Catastrophize and try and see you being awake at two in the morning, something that's a bit of an adventure, not a total disaster. Tip number two, I try and list 10 things that I'm grateful for. I've often found that makes me feel better, it can really calm me down, which in turn can help me to get to sleep. So tip number three, instead of just staying in bed, panicking about how tired you're gonna to be tomorrow, get up and do something productive with this time. Who knows, this could be the universe's sign of saying, now is the time for you to crack on with that goal. It's got nothing to do with the universe. And number four, to stop yourself catastrophizing, still not sure if that's a word, try and think what's the worst that can happen. The worst that can happen is you're gonna be a bit tired tomorrow. Okay, well, you've had days in the past where you felt tired. I imagine a lot more since you became a dad. And tip number six, which is quite a lot like tip number one, try and move your perspective. You missed out number five. Thank you. And number five, statistically, you really are not alone. Apparently, according to the Tinter web, one in five people in the UK aren't getting enough sleep. And apparently 25% of adults cite money worries as one of the things that keeps them awake. And apparently when asked, 66% of adolescents said that poor sleep or not being able to get enough sleep had a negative effect on their mental health. And tip number six, try and move your perspective. Half the reason I can't get to sleep is because I'm so amped up. I've got myself so worked up, I need to actually talk and calm myself down. The universe? If I could start to see the wood from the trees, take a step back and go, 
This isn't the rest of your life. This is one night where you're struggling to get to sleep. And who knows, it might be the night that you get up or you write that book, or you start that podcast, or you start that YouTube channel, which has created the trajectory that in five years time, your life is in a much more exciting place. I'm generally trying to create a community that supports people who struggle with OCD. And like any group or community, it's much more interesting when there's two-way conversations. So if you have a question for me on anything to do with OCD, or you just want to say hi, that would be hugely appreciated. And if you like what I'm trying to do and want to support this channel, please subscribe and give me a like. As a very small YouTuber trying to compete with massive YouTubers and trying to get my message to support other OCD sufferers out there, if you could be kind enough to watch this video to the end, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. My book, First Time Dad, A 42-Week Guide to Pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.